Hey guys, what's up? Stephanie, the English coach here from EnglishFullTime.com. In this video, we are going to talk about how to improve your listening skills in English. And the reason I'm making this video is because this is one of the most frequently asked questions that I get. You guys say, Stephanie, I don't understand what's going on. I understand you perfectly. But then when I watch TV shows and movies in English, I have to turn on subtitles because I feel like I don't understand anything. Okay, so we're going to talk about this. And and how you can improve your listening skills and what some of the reasons might be that you're not understanding other people in English, but you understand me perfectly fine, okay? So to begin, one of the reasons why you understand me so well is because I speak well. I have very good speaking habits because as I was growing up, I competed in speech competitions, poetry competitions. I did public speaking. I did acting classes. I sang in choirs. I sang in jazz groups, okay? There are so many things that I did growing up that really focused on helping me improve my voice and have a strong voice and the voice that I have. And also as I've become an adult, I really focus on my voice because your voice is something that everyone has to listen to, not just you, okay? Have you ever made a video and you're like, oh, I hate my voice? Well, think about it. If you hate your voice, what do other people think about your voice? Because everyone has to listen to your voice, right? So I didn't want to hate my voice. I focused on improving my voice and I really just started listening to my speech, my patterns, my speaking habits, the tone of my voice, okay, the sound, the volume, everything. And I started paying attention to it. Anytime you start paying attention to something and you're actively trying to improve it and thinking, why don't I like this? What can I do to improve it? you're going to start noticing things. Like if you listen to my voice and you ask yourself, okay, why do I like Stephanie's voice? You're going to be able to identify specific things about my voice that you like. Maybe it's the fact that I go up and I go down when I speak or something like that. And then you're going to be able to incorporate that. Okay. You, you don't need a teacher or somebody to show you how to do all of these things. You can just identify what it is and then start imitating the way that I speak or the way anybody speaks, whoever speaks in a way that you like, maybe it's a famous actor or someone on TV, you can analyze their voice. What do you like about it? What do you not like about it? And then you can start to imitate them. So going back to the good speaking habits I was telling you guys about, one of the things that I do is I enunciate and I'm very expressive. So I speak not just with my vocal cords and my tongue and my mouth, but I speak with my eyes. I speak with my facial expressions. I speak in a way that communicates to you and helps make me more understandable. Also the way that I pause when I speak or the words that I emphasize when I speak all of that helps you focus on what I'm saying and be able to listen to me for a long time. And like I said, I enunciate, I don't mumble. I have good pronunciation habits. Again, these are just things that I learned how to do growing up because of the experiences that I had. I never had a teacher that really, you know, taught me how to do all of this. It just was something that I sort of had to do because of the activities that I was involved in. And I also taught in classrooms for several years and I don't know if you have experience, you know, presenting in front of huge groups of people, but if you're not entertaining or if you don't speak in a certain way, people will not pay attention to you. And so I have had to learn basically because of survival that if I want people to pay attention to my message, I have to deliver it in a way that's going to hold their attention, right? So just life experience has taught me how to present in certain ways. And this is why I present the way that I do. And not everybody's going to like it and that's totally okay. But a lot of you have commented on my videos saying, wow, 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 we understand you. What's going on? Okay, so that's one of the reasons. Now, the other reason you might understand me more than, you know, TV shows and series and stuff like that is because maybe you're more familiar with my accent. I grew up in California, so I speak like the way people speak in California. And this means that if you watch TV shows that are based in the US, a lot of times these shows have my same accent. The people in there speak the way that I speak. So you're just very familiar with my dialect of English, okay? With my way of speaking. Now, if you watch, I don't know, the news in Ireland or in the UK or in Australia, maybe you're not as familiar with those accents because you have not consumed as much material from those regions, okay? With their specific English dialect and way of speaking. Another reason that you might understand me a lot more than other people is because when I make YouTube videos or videos in general, I 
am presenting. So it's not that I'm trying to slow down. I'm not slowing down. As you guys can see, I'm speaking rather quickly right now. Actually, right now I'm speaking more quickly than I would in a natural conversation. In a natural conversation, you guys, I take my time, I'm pretty slow, I relax. But when I'm presenting, all of a sudden, I don't know what happens, something inside of me just wants to go faster. Um, and that might be you know, me just wanting to keep everyone's attention. But as I go faster, I'm also taking special care to make sure I'm pronouncing words well so you guys can understand me even though I'm speaking faster. And I notice it because when I present in front of a large group for an hour or an hour and a half, oh my gosh, my voice is so sore. And that's when I realize, wow, that I'm really putting a huge effort into the way that I'm speaking so that I can be understood in natural conversation I go slower. I don't support my voice as well. So when we say support, we're talking about the volume of the voice, okay? I'm really using my diaphragm and my muscles in my diaphragm to project my voice. And even though I'm the only person in this room right now, I'm speaking in such a way where if someone was, you know, 50 feet away, they would probably still be able to hear me. That's supporting your voice and projecting. That's what I do when I make these videos because I am presenting and it's just this state of of being and it's just the way that I present it's how I do it so that's another reason why you probably understand me so well now when you're watching TV shows you're not watching people present you're watching people act so people are acting but they're pretending to be in their natural normal environment they're not projecting they're not pronouncing words in a way so that anybody could understand them they're just talking, okay? This is also why I've been making a series on my YouTube channel about fast speech to help you guys get more familiar with these ways of speaking, with how native speakers combine words in English so that you can start understanding us more. So yeah, in these TV shows, people are using slang, they're using idioms, maybe they are mumbling, they're speaking in ways that you don't necessarily understand. And you will learn to understand people in these shows. I promise you will, but it really really takes time. You have to consume hours and hours and hours and hours of TV shows over a long period of time, okay? This does not happen in six months. It could take a year, it could take two years of consuming material like that on a daily basis for you to really start understanding everything that you hear. And then there are always gonna be things that go over your head, okay? When we say go over your head, that means there's always gonna be things that you don't understand. And I'm sure this happens in your native language too. Maybe there's a joke that goes over your head. And so if it happens in your native language, it's also going to happen in English. And the better you get, the more you're going to be able to understand. And the more you expose yourself to English, the more you're gonna be able to understand. So now I'm gonna share some stories with you to put all of this into perspective. I studied Spanish in Argentina for six months. Then I ended up living in Argentina for several years, right? But in high school and college, I studied Spanish and it was my dream to study Spanish abroad. So I went to Argentina for six months and then I went back to the USA. And when I went back, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so exciting. I studied Spanish in Argentina. My Spanish is probably so good, uh, you know, cause I had that experience of being immersed in the culture and the and in the language for six months. So I go back to the USA and I went to this outdoor market with a friend and my friend was Mexican and there were lots of different booths with people selling different items, okay? And I come to this booth and I noticed there was a Hispanic man selling items and I was like, oh, perfect, this is the perfect opportunity for me to show off, you know, my great Spanish and how good I've gotten, etc. So I ask about a product in Spanish to this Hispanic man and I said, "Hi, wow, look at this product. It's beautiful, whatever. You know, how much does it cost?" And you know what he said? He was like, and I was like, "Okay, thanks. Bye." I did not understand anything that he said and I was just like, Oh my gosh, like this is ridiculous. I studied Spanish in Argentina for six months. Why don't I understand? And then that's when I really learned, hey, just because you studied in a country does not mean you're gonna now understand every single native speaker, okay? It does not work like that because there are different types of English, you guys. There are different types of Spanish and then each individual person has a specific way of speaking. You know, younger people use more slang. Older people use words that 
you know, younger people never use. So there's so many different types of ways of speaking. And this is why it can get so frustrating for you guys as learners. So my tip here is for you to be patient with yourself and for you to be patient with your learning experience. Because again, just because you study a language for years or just because you're super familiar with the American accent or just because you studied English in the USA does not mean that now you're gonna understand every single native speaker all the time, right? There are some specific comedians in Spanish that I really like and I watch their shows and every single time I watch their shows, I'm like, oh my gosh, I've seen this show five times, but this is the first time I understand that joke or the first time I get that joke or the first time I hear that word. You can listen to the same thing multiple times and pick up something new every single time because you're getting more and more and more familiar with the language as you go. Now, the next thing I wanna tell you guys about is how my sister-in-law, Ren's younger sister, okay, my husband's younger sister, how she really improved her English. When we first met, she understood some English, but she really didn't speak it. And then she just watched so much TV in English and she listened to so much music in English that now we can talk in English and have an entire conversation and she understands everything. It's phenomenal. And I'm just like, wow, you've had such an incredible transformation. And I know exactly how she did it because I would see her almost every single day. And every single day she'd be watching TV in English, listening to music in English. And then she would look up the lyrics, read the lyrics, learn the lyrics and sing the songs. She was extremely involved over a four year plus period with English to the point where now she speaks it and she doesn't feel nervous when she speaks it. She doesn't lack confidence or anything. Her pronunciation is not perfect. Sometimes she messes up. Her grammar is not perfect. Sometimes she messes up, but still that is how she was able to really learn English and improve her listening skills. Again, constant exposure day after day, year after year. Now with that, I want to end by sharing another story. Okay. This is the story about a guy I did a private coaching call with back when I did private calls. I do not offer private sessions anymore, but basically during this call, he was like, Stephanie, I'm so frustrated with my listening skills what you know what do i have to do to improve and i was giving him all this advice like the best possible advice i could give and then he would repeat himself and he'd say stephanie i'm really struggling with my listening skills you know what do i have to do to improve and so i'd give him more advice and i'd tell him more stories and i'd explain in detail exactly what he had to do and then he'd say stephanie i'm really struggling with my listening skills i really just want to know what i have to do and at that point I was like, oh my gosh, yeah, you really do struggle with your listening skills because I've explained this to you a million different ways and I've given you the answer. I have the answer and I've given it to you and you're still asking the same question. I like, my mind was blown. I was like, is this what? What is wrong with this guy right now? <laughs> because he was understanding what I was saying. You know, he really wasn't having trouble understanding me, but he just kept asking the same question because he did not like my answer. That's literally it. He did not like my answer. He did not like what I was telling him. He was looking for a magic solution and there is no freaking magic solution. I am so sorry to say it, but it needs to be said. There's no magic solution. People are always looking for a quick fix to do this or to do that. Think about the things you have mastered. How long has that taken you? Okay, if you're a doctor or whatever your profession is or whatever you're good at, if you're really good at chess or soccer, I don't care what it is, what are you really good at, right? Think about how long it has taken you to master that skill and to get to that really high level. Now, English is no different. Listening skills, speaking skills are no different. If you really want to master something, you have to go to a really deep level with that subject day after day, year after year. That is literally what it takes. And again, there is no magic solution. And when I talked to this guy, I asked him, you know, after he kept asking me the same questions over and over again, and I was like, okay, wait, stop. Let me identify what you have actually tried. Because when somebody is struggling with something, you really have to figure out why they're struggling with it. Like what went on? What's, what have they tried? What has worked? What hasn't worked? So I asked him and I said, okay, how long have you been studying English for? And I think his answer was like three years or two years or something like that. And he had been living in the USA for one year. And this was his big struggle. He's like, I'm living in the USA and I'm struggling to understand native speakers. So after asking 
asking him all of these questions, I discovered that he had been studying English for about three years. He had been living in the USA for about one year. But before going to the USA, he was not very involved with English. He was studying using textbooks and he was not exposing himself to the language. He did not watch TV shows in English. He did not listen to music in English. And then all of a sudden he came to the USA and he was struggling with his listening skills and understanding native speakers. And he was like, hey, you know, now I am listening to music every day. Now I am watching TV shows every day, you know, but I'm still struggling with it. And once I realized the timeline that we were dealing with, I was like, okay, at this point, you're doing everything you possibly can to improve your listening skills. You're controlling what you can control, but there is something that's out of your control that you can't control. And that's time. It's literally the amount of time it takes your brain to absorb a language and to process it and to make it become a part of you. You have to assimilate the language, okay? So when he was studying in English in his country, he was not very involved with the language. Then he went to the USA completely immersed studying 24 seven. And at that point he had only been in the USA for one year. So that's just not enough time. If he kept doing that year after year, maybe in about two years, he'd feel really confident with his English and three, four, five years, definitely he would feel confident with that level of study and immersion. So anyhow, I really hope that this video answers your guys' questions about why you understand me and why you don't understand other people. Uh, and hopefully you guys are satisfied with these answers answers because this is the answer. If you're here looking for a magic solution or something like you have to listen to English while you sleep for 30 minutes every day and then, I don't know, drink some special brain juice and this and this and that, I don't know. There are no magic solutions. So if that's what you were here looking for, I'm sorry to disappoint you. But if not, hopefully you find comfort in the fact that as long as you are exposing yourself to the language day after day, year after year, you're going to get to that level where you understand, okay? And not just me, but also where you understand TV shows. All right, so that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I just wanna let you guys know that you should check out the description because I always include links there to other things that you might be interested in. And and if you like these videos and if you want more videos and more training from me, I want to let you guys know that I run a private online video platform. This is not free, but it is very affordable. And in this platform, I put lots of training every single week to help you guys with your English. There's lots of videos there already, lots of courses, and basically you can access everything. Okay. It's just one monthly payment and you can get a lot more support there with your English. So if you like watching my videos on YouTube and you want more feel free to join us in the private platform because there's also a forum section integrated so you can get to meet the other students a lot of times i give little assignments after each video so you can participate as well and it's just a completely different learning experience than on youtube but it's also very similar to youtube so again if you like what you're doing here and you want to keep improving your grammar your pronunciation your writing your fluency your speaking your confidence everything i want to invite you to join us over over there on the private platform. All right, that's it, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. Please let me know what you learned in the comments. And if you are one of my more advanced subscribers, okay, and if you understand TV shows, and if you understand music and English and native speakers who speak with different dialects, please tell everybody in the comments how you achieved that because I swear everybody's looking for the magic solution. I'm convinced that there is no magic solution. There's just different ways to improve your listening skills. You have to do what you enjoy, right? But please share what worked for you in the comments because people are going to be able to learn from you, to learn from your suggestions. And I would just really appreciate that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for subscribing. Thanks for watching my videos, you guys. I hope you're learning a lot and that's all. I will see you in another video. Bye.